In this video, I'm going to talk about something that basically divides nature and especially wildlife photographers in two groups. That is back button autofocus or let's call it trigger finger autofocus. I'm going to break it down and tell you why I believe all wildlife photographers should master both techniques because they are just tools that have different purposes in different situations. But let's talk much more about that. Before we go there, let's jump into nature and let me just share a few great moments with you. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. For these of you who haven't been on this channel before, my name is Morten and today I am going to talk to you about back button autofocus versus, let me call it, front finger trigger finger finger <laughs> autofocus. Um, the reason why I have two cameras here is just because then it's easier uh, to say trigger finger autofocus and back button autofocus. Um, and also because I have a macro lens on here, I have a telephoto lens on here, and it has a little to do with the point I'm hopefully reaching at the end of this video. I mean, I could probably make a two hour long video about this topic because I love both trigger finger autofocus and back button autofocus. But the purpose of this video is not to explain the whole thing fully. The purpose of this video is to inspire you to actually use both techniques and teach yourself these tools because it's not either or, it's both and because as I said, they both have very, very good purposes. It's just about learning them so you know exactly when you're going to use them. Um, I'm going to share a few examples from where you look through my viewfinder and I'm uh, later in the video where I explain why I use the uh, focus techniques I do. And I'm also going to show you some examples from some of my recent photo trips and explain in this situation I use this uh, technique because of that. So um, yeah, let's get started. First of all, um, I want to uh, explain you the main difference between the two autofocus, but even before that I'm going to tell you uh, how I use my autofocus. And this is regardless if I'm using Canon or Nikon or Sony, it's just it applies to everything. See, most camera has uh, uh, two autofocus modes that basically uh, that are interesting for us as wildlife photographer. These two modes has two different; they have two different purposes. The one shot, or let's call that stationary autofocus from now on, and let's call the other one continuously autofocus. The one shot autofocus, or I can't even do it myself. The stationary autofocus is the one where you press, let's say, your trigger finger down and the moment the camera, what to say, get the focus, it will stay there as long as you have half pressed your, uh, uh, your trigger finger here. Uh, even though the subject moves closer or further away, once locked, always locked, until you pump it by releasing the finger and press it again and then it will try to get out of focus uh, or the subject in focus another time. And the good thing about this is if you're photographing a person, let's say you take your camera up, you press your index finger down and then you get focus and then you can just make pictures and move, uh, recompose the photo. It's uh, really good for that but in my opinion it's almost the only thing it's good for because as a wildlife photographer you need to be ready for a moving subject and unexpected things to happen. That is why I always use continuous autofocus with almost without exceptions. The continuous autofocus will never really lock. It will continue to follow your subject and it will continue to try to maintain a focus regardless where the subject is. And in the continuous autofocus you have different uh, patterns, you have different tools to helping you to, to get what you want. 
And let's, this is not an out of focus uh, lesson, but basically you have a one point, then you have one point with supporting points, and then you have like almost the whole uh, sensor. And then you have some tracking options where the object will be tracked around. And then the newer cameras, you have like eye detection and you have animal uh, detection or animal tracking and stuff like that. But that's another story. Now, just for the simplicity of this uh, little video, let's just say that we are only using a single point autofocus. Um, I always use the continuous autofocus because with the continuous autofocus on, uh, I'm always ready for the subject to move. Uh, I'll never find myself in a situation where I'm photographing a bus out sitting on the, uh, uh, on the grass and then I have the, the, the stationary autofocus and then I have to change something when the bird starts to fly. Uh, I just want to basically be able to photograph everything, uh, either if it's, if it's moving or not. So what I do is normally I use the trigger finger autofocus. And we know the camera is in the continuous autofocus mode. Let's say we have the single point in the autofocus. And what I do is like I assign my AF on button here to lock the autofocus, but not the exposure. And it's the same th uh, thing on the Z6. I assign the AF on button to uh, stop the autofocus. And you can do that on Canon, you can do that on Sony, you can do that on all cameras. This means basically, that as long as I keep my thumb away and I focus with the index finger or trigger finger here, the camera will never lock on anything. That is where the AF, uh, let's say the AF lock or AF on button uh, it's really weird, it's called AF on when you use it for AF lock, but that's because it's meant for back button autofocus, but let's talk more about that later. The moment I press in this button, I disable the autofocus completely. This has different uh, advantages. First of all, I can maintain focus with my index finger or trigger finger. It's called index finger, I think it's better. It's not a trigger finger. So index finger, I press here and I get focus. And the moment I get photo focus, uh, if the subject is uh, stationary, I press my AF lock with a thumb and then the autofocus is disabled. Now I'm able to recompose the frame and as long as I keep this pressed, the thumb pressed, the autofocus will not go in and, and do anything. So I can basically photograph there. And this is very good when the animal or the bird or whatever it is, is just at the same location because or the same place without moving the distance. Then I can just photograph and I can even go in and do some manual adjustments and stuff like that. This is uh, really nice because then when the animal starts moving, I just release my finger and I can follow again the if it goes closer or further away. So this is very, very good. Um, there are some advantages with this uh, technique and there are disadvantages. And some of the disadvantages, they are the reason why I also very often use the back button autofocus. Because like our finger has, the main purpose of the finger now is to uh, of course take pictures. And another main purpose is to up, uh, like get the, I, just, I don't know if it's called obtain focus, but now I think it's called obtain. Now I'll just call it that and then you know what I mean for the rest of the video. Um, I press this to obtain focus and then I can also photograph with that, take the pictures with, with the index finger. Then with the, with the back it has different purposes. Now one of the purposes is to lock the outer focus if I want to recompose or if I want manual focus. So this is one purpose of the thumb. Another purpose of the thumb is to basically move the focus point or focus points or focus pattern around. A third purpose is to adjust either the shutter speed or the aperture depending on what you have here. And uh, uh, another purpose is to basically being able to use some of these buttons if I use custom buttons down here to change anything. That means that without losing tracking autofocus here, or like continuous autofocus, I can focus, I can take pictures, and at the same time I can move the focus point around, I can change things. That is the good thing about it. That is why I use this a lot. Uh, and I'll tell you later when I use this and when I use the back button autofocus. The bad thing 
about this technique is if I don't really need to use out of focus that much when I basically want to have focus because the badger is between some leaves, a really difficult subject, a really challenging subject, a backlight, the, the, I know that it's hard to, to obtain focus, but then when I have it, I want to keep it and just photograph. Here with this technique, with the index finger, trigger finger, out of focus, I need to hold this AF lock button constantly. The moment I remove my finger to remove the focus points here or to change any other settings here, the moment I release this finger, it will start focusing again. And then I risk to, to lose the subject and I have to get it back. And in, in difficult light situation, in difficult uh, situation with a lot of uh, like branches or leaves or grass, this is not what I want. And this is where the back button out of focus really comes into play. The back button out of focus, on the other hand, um, is kind of, it's a little different because in the back button out of focus, you use the back button here, the AF on, to focus. So you separate the, the, the release button and the out of focus. You separate these two things, meaning that this button is only good for taking pictures and this is only good for uh, starting the autofocus. Back button autofocus. I use a lot when the light is challenging, when I don't need autofocus that often, when I need to photograph in some really challenging situation like with the badgers or when I'm in the grass. Because with the badgers I had the challenge, there were a lot of grass, there were a lot of moving ferns, and constantly, I only got a few seconds with a, with a clear shot of the badger, then I need to get the focus, and then for a long time, I didn't dare to focus because I knew it would catch something else. So in that situation, I used the back button out of focus because I could then get my focus, I could then photograph, and then without thinking about the focus, without having to press this all the time. And you remember before I said I like to have my finger free because then as I was fo focusing I could do things, move the focus point around. Like with this method where you use your index finger to focus, you can use your thumb as long as you don't need to lock the autofocus. That means that you can use your thumb when autofocusing. Move your focus point around when autofocusing. With the back button autofocus, you can use your thumb when not focusing. And that's the big difference. Uh, and that is what dictates if you want one or another, if you ask me. Because when I'm sitting there with the badgers, I get focus and everything is perfect. And now I don't need to focus until something special happens. And then it's quickly to just press the AF on button, get focus and release it again, because then I have my finger to move focus point around. And it has another big advantage at that, and that is when um, I am using manual focus a lot, like on this lens, um, because the, the, the depth of field is so uh, what to say shallow I need a very precise focus also because the focus manual focus ring is so uh, superior to, to, to the one of these two it means that a lot of the time when using this I use the back button out of focus because I use manual focus probably six to se 60 to 70 percent of all the pictures I make and that is something I have started after I have switched to the mirrorless system. Because in this system I can zoom in in the viewfinder. So I have assigned my custom button here to zoom in on uh, the subject. The advantage of that is of course I can use my manual focus very precise and just get the eyes of the subject. And then I don't have to think about holding this. I can move my focus point around at the same time when still making pictures because that's important, because the, when you zoom in to 100% with the custom button here, it will zoom in at the point where you have your focus point. Uh, that means that if I want to zoom, zoom in on the badger's face, I need first to move the focus point to the badger's face and then zoom in. And if I have to hold this 
to to uh, lock the focus, then I cannot take picture when I lose when I release the the, the AF lock. I cannot take photos because then it will start hunting. With a back button out of focus, I can release the button because I don't need to focus. I can just take pictures, take pictures, take pictures while moving the, the focus point, zooming in, fine tune out of focus, continuing to take picture while all this happens. And that is extremely handy in this situation. There are other situations where I use the back button out of focus, especially when I have the big gloves on and I'm photographing, let's say, Ellesmere Island, because here I need my thumb is always numb and I can't really feel what I'm doing. And then it's not that nice when you're in the snow, which is categorized as a difficult subject to, to, to focus in because maybe the, the Arctic fox is white and the snow is white and the focus will hunt a lot. That means most of the time I rely solely on manual focus. But sometimes it is nice to be able to use out of focus when the fox starts running. So in this case, back button out of focus because one time I have focus, I don't have to hold this in to lock the focus because this one is numb and with big gloves and sometimes I don't hit and then it will start focusing. So here I like back button out of focus because I press my hand if that's necessary to get the focus. I release and then I can use like my whole hand to take photos because I don't have all these fine movement with the big gloves. I don't know if this makes sense, but I, I, I just tried my best to explain now I want to sum this up, uh, more simple uh, explained. I also want to show you some, f some uh, through my viewfinder from the, down my blind with a bossart where I'm using uh, the different techniques and then I'm going to explain you what is going to happen as we are looking through my viewfinder and the 600 millimeter. Before we move on, I just want to take a moment to talk about Squarespace who sponsored this video. And the reason why I don't hesitate to recommend them is the fact that it's just super duper easy to make a website because you basically start with a template that you like and from that template you basically fill in your own photos, change it to your own style, change it with your own text and then at the end of the day you have a beautiful looking website. You then also have a built-in e-commerce uh, e where you can sell print, you can sell your books, you can sell downloadable products and the last thing is just like it's always working. It's fast, it's fast loading time It's uh, and it's just beautiful. And um, I think it's perfect for everyone who doesn't want to spend the time sitting uh, faffing around with plugins and codes and PHP and CSS and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I think it's perfect for that. And if you want, uh, you can go and visit my link below. Uh, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Morten Hilmer to start your free trial and get 10% off your first purchase. So yeah, with that said, let's go out and have a look uh, through my camera and see what's, uh, what it actually looked like when I use these autofocus techniques as uh, seen through my lens. And then I'm going to explain a little about what's going on actually. So yeah, here you see the... Um, uh, the boss art and I'm using the, 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 the back button out of focus to try to, to uh, uh, get him in focus. And you can see it's quite challenging because sometimes it just looks up and then it looks down. And uh, what I did here was like I zoomed in first 100% uh, in the viewfinder just to check out the, um, the, the sharpness. And then I basically kept it there and just keep, uh, kept photographing. Uh, there are other situations that are more tricky, like a uh, pheasant, and I try to use here the, the, the what is it, tracking out of focus, but because of all the grass and the Nikon doesn't really have animal recognition and stuff, I lose it a lot of the times. But it's always challenging here because you want to, uh, you can see if I use the trigger finger and I lose the, the thumb, then it will suddenly focus on the background. or because I don't press the, I just rely on the outer focus, then suddenly if the buzzard goes away or go down to eat, I will focus on the background. That is why I basically prefer here to focus manually and then just don't have to concentrate on that. Another situation is here with the back dress where you can see all the ferns. They are really, really challenging for the outer focus. And um, 
yeah, it's uh, just really, really hard to, to, to work in these conditions because the autofocus will always catch a leaf in front of you. So again here I use the back button autofocus uh, method because I can then uh, zoom in on the place where the badges are, get the focus and then forget about autofocus and just photograph. Every so often if the badger suddenly comes up in a different location, I can quickly press the thumb to you know, obtain focus and then I'm good to go again. So yeah, I really hope you could use some of these uh, uh, tips and explanations for anything. And as I started, I don't think it's about choosing either back button autofocus or uh, index finger autofocus. Uh, I think like all other things in the camera, these are tools that you can use when you need them. And you don't have to choose one of them. You can easily, your brain can easily adopt ch changing. And when you get out photographing shorebirds, you can maybe use the index finger autofocus. When you're in the different situation, you can switch to back button autofocus. So bottom line is just, I encourage you to, to really, really get comfortable with both techniques so that you don't have to listen to people like me and other people saying what is best, what is not best, but you have to master both of these techniques so you can choose for yourself what is best and what is best in which situations. So yeah, that was all from me this time. Um, yeah, uh, take care and uh, see you out there.